So in uh, July of 2016, which is about 10 months later, that's fairly typical for first-line chemotherapy in terms of what's called progression-free survival, so surviving without it getting worse. The patient complains of increasing fatigue. A CT scan is obtained, and that shows three new liver lesions plus growth of one of the other lesions. So clearly at this point, this patient is not resectable, not curable. You're on a palliative paradigm. And again, it's 10 months after you started the full theory. And if you look across multiple trials, that 10-month mark is very, very common for progression-free survival. So again, a very typical situation. And so now the question is, you know, what do we do next? If the patient got full theory and bevacizumab first line, we'll usually switch to a full FOX-based regimen or KPOX with capecitabine and oxaliplatinum. If the patient received full FOX or KPOX first line, we'll then switch to full theory. So the, basically the cytotoxic backbone is switched depending on what you used in the first line setting. Secondly is what do you do about the biologic? And the evidence is that you can do one of several things. So you could use bevacizumab again, and that's through the TML trial, which showed a 20% uh, reduction in death by continuing bevacizumab in the second line setting. You could use Zivofliberset, which uh, per the Valor trial was also shown to have a roughly 20% reduction. And you could also use Ramacirumab. All of these are approved in the second line setting. All of them has a, have a hazard ratio of approximately 0.80. So a very incremental kind of small survival benefit, but statistically significant. We can argue about the economics of that and what all that means in terms of these modest survival benefits, but they all have a role in that setting. And so in this case, this patient was given full Fox and Vivacizumab, which is a completely reasonable thing to do uh, in this setting. And as I said, you could choose the other biologics as well. The rationale for using full Fox and Vivacizumab is basically based on two studies. The Turnagon trial, which showed that if you start with A, you go to B. If you start with B, you go to A in terms of cytotoxic regimen. So full Fox, then you go to full theory. If you start with full theory, then you go to full Fox. So that's the cytotoxic backbone story. And then the biologic story, you can use three choices, all of which have level one evidence, continuing bevacizumab per the TML trial, switching to Zivifliversept per the Valor trial, and switching to Ramacirumab. So any of those would be reasonable options in this case. The factors when deciding therapy are several. The first is, again, what are the goals of therapy? Many patients after 10 months of chemo, they're tired. They, they kind of want to discuss what are the goals here, what's my quality of life? Because we're not curing patients. It's by definition palliative. And I can't tell you how many second opinions I've seen when I've said to the patient, what's the goal of this? You, it sounds like you're having a tough time. You're in bed a lot. You're not having a good quality of life. What is your goal? And they can't answer the question. Some of them say, well, the goal is to cure. And you know if they have widespread cancer, that's not going to happen. And so being very clear with what the goals of therapy are, are I think, is very important. Um, secondly, uh, and this kind of gets back to the goals, but what's the toxicity going to be? So for instance, if a patient has pre-existing neuropathy, you might be careful about using oxaliplatinum in the second line setting. If they had terrible um, side effects from 5-FU, you might be thinking about other choices there. So this is where therapy becomes more and more personalized based on how the patient's doing. I've had patients after 10 months of chemo, they look great, they really wanna keep going. And I've had patients who just look horrible at that point. Um, so the goals of therapy, how the patient is doing, and again, options. You have lots of options. If you look at the NCCN guidelines, there's pages and pages of these algorithms because there's different options that you can use. The rationale for continuing bevacizumab beyond progression is based on the TML study. That's treatment through multiple lines. And that was a study that basically randomized patients in the second line setting between either continuing bevacizumab or stopping it and it showed a survival benefit with a hazard ratio of 0.8, roughly. The same hazard ratio was obtained by switching to Zivifliversept or Ramacirumab. So again, you have those three choices in the second line setting, and um, you can make arguments back and forth in terms of which one you choose, and I think most oncologists choose what they're comfortable with and what they've had good experience with. 